Welcome back to In the Can. You know, one of my favorite parts, probably my favorite part about Sundance is the documentaries because you get to see so many and many times it, it takes a while to be able to see them out in public. But one of the <laughs> most highly anticipated documentaries this year is called Robin Williams, Come Inside My Mind. The beloved Robin Williams comedian, of course, no longer with us, but his life was super interesting and he was super interesting. And we have director Marina Zenovich who's here um, after putting this movie together. How, there must have been an incredible amount of material to oh be working goodness. with. Oh my goodness, hours and hours. I mean, over a hundred hours of archive stand-up comedy, acting, uh, acting roles, radio interviews, home movies. It was a treasure trove of Robin in um, different faces. <laughs> Um, he's yeah. so, um, he was so omnipresent, he was everywhere, everybody had seen him somewhere, had heard him, knew who he was. So how do you hunt down the little pieces of him that people haven't seen or might not be familiar with? That's a great question. The film is told through Robin's voice. So um, we were looking for, especially today in the, in the day of YouTube where everybody has seen everything, we were looking for things that we hadn't seen before and we found some. But it's told in his voice uh, along with interviews with David Letterman, Steve Martin, Whoopi Goldberg, family, um, telling his story and I don't know, it's just kind of uh, showing bits of him that you haven't seen, bits that you have, but the way we told it, um, it feels kind of new and it's a, a real kind of appreciation and celebration of his spectacular genius. Lots of times friends and family are super protective, especially when a life ends tragically like this. So um, how supportive were they? How involved were they? You were just talking about that. Um, you know, I think for some of the, f I can't speak for them, but my understanding of it was that for some people, it was a little too soon. Mm. Um, but I think when, I think those who have seen the film appreciate it for what it is. It was, um, I have the chills talking about it because it was handcrafted with a lot of love and care um, for him and respect for uh, his family and kind of what happened and, um, you know, we'll see. I mean, people who have seen it really love it, and 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 the word that kind of it's 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 heartbreaking, mm. but funny. You know, it's a, it's a celebration of his of his beautiful life. He is so iconic. There's a huge responsibility in telling mm. his story now. Did you feel that, or how did you oh deal with God, that? Oh my God, are you kidding? Right, <laughs> right. Um, you just, you take it all in. I mean, I had amazing producers, editors, researchers. Um, we all, it, it's just all about getting the balance right. You know, it's like a little funny, a little sad, but that's, that takes time. That takes trying things out. You know, I had one editor for a long time. At a certain point, we, we brought in another editor. Just having a fresh set of eyes kind of, you know, finding little nuggets because you're just inundated with if you're if you're telling it in his voice so you you're looking for sentences that that open up him to you in a way that you haven't seen him before so it was that kind of like looking for a what is it a needle in a haystack mm -hmm. and um, a tremendous amount of responsibility I mean I I feel that I feel that we got it right um, I don't often sound like that about my films, yeah. so I may be wrong, but um, I'm very pleased with how it turned out. It's, um, it's, it's a tribute to him. Something about you and the way that you presented the project, though, obviously made friends and family trust you enough to give this to you. Well, it's all about trust. Um, I find that with documentary filmmakers, um, they're a special breed who are a combination of um, very trusting um, if they don't have an agenda. Right. <laughs> and most of the right. real ones don't. Um, and also very tough because you're used to having doors slammed in your face. So you're like super tough, but you don't think you are. Then you meet someone else like you and it's like, hey, you're like, me. I love this. <laughs> like, we're so tough. So great. But, but kind because you have to come to these things with an open heart. And um, I mean, when I was doing the interview with his son, I was, I was literally sobbing. And 
just because I knew how hard it was for him and my dad had died not too long ago so it was all fresh and him trying to explain I mean it's just it's loaded <laughs> it is very loaded and you wanna you wanna celebrate but yet you don't want a hagiography so it's kind of it's all it's all balance so it's just kind of having the right tone and um, laughing and crying and mm -hmm. we found a lot of his comedy um, even from 30 years ago is so timely. Yeah. He's talking about a woman president, you know, or trying to have one. He's talking <laughs> about gun control. I mean, you know, we thought, God, if only Robin Williams were alive now mm. in this kind of insane day and age of, of our president. Did the final cut of the movie, uh, is it what you started with? Did you kind of oh, God, zigzag? No, no. So totally different. Yeah, I mean, my editor and I, Greg Fenton, um, we put it together sequentially. That's how we had, that's how we work, to kind of tell the story of his life. But you don't want like a biopic. Right. So then we started breaking it up and moving things around, um, you know, with the help of our producers. And then our second editor, it's kind of like themes. It's a lot about creativity. It's about fear. It's about life. And... I don't know, it's, um, the title was hard to pick. Some people hate it, some people love it. I mean, it's like I saw that photo of him, like, where's yeah. the camera? I'm like, oh, the minute I saw that photo, I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's, the, like, one. that's the movie, that's the movie. <laughs> and I like to see that picture, it just sums it up. Yeah. It's like, he just wanted it all and he lived so much and, I think that when his brain kind of started to go out on him, he didn't really know how to accept that. I mean, with a brain like that, it's kind of like... It's so, unique, for sure. Oh my God. Yeah. So. What did you learn in your research for this film that you didn't know before that you thought was super interesting? Um, that he was an only child who had two siblings that he didn't know about, oh. two half-brothers. So for me, having an only child, making a film about an only child was very much about kind of realizing what being an only child and then realizing he had these siblings and kind of like what did that do to him. You know, I'm always like part detective, part <laughs> psychiatrist trying to figure out without being too cheesy like what made him need love and attention and you know it was interesting to learn about his mother who was this incredible character um, yeah just how smart he was how well read and you know you can't make the kinds of jokes that he made without knowing like history and the world and I mean right. it's just he was he was a one-off and the movie has the potential to be so incredibly sad. Um, was it easy to balance that? It was, it was hard, but um, there's comedy. I mean, it just, it, it, it's, it, it's incredibly hard, but you kind of find it. You just need time. You need time to try things out. And when it works, it works. And when it doesn't, it doesn't. And we just kept working until it worked. Awesome. So. And then um, I know the movie is um, premiering tonight. Yes. yes. And it's super exciting. Yeah. Now, you've been to Sundance before. She actually said she's been in the, this building on this TV show. In 1998. Back when she was 12 <laughs> or 10. Yes, I was 10 then. <laughs> it's so hard being 30. It's so hard. <laughs> but is it still a thrill having a movie oh premiere God, here? What kidding? is it like having a movie premiere here and like it's film lovers mecca? It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've been here three times, and when you get that phone call, you know, last year I got an email, this year I got a phone, last year I was like, come on, an email, <laughs> Jesus Christ, call me on the phone, I'm old fashioned. Um, but I got the phone call, and it's, you know, it it means a lot, it means a lot. And for me, having been here so many times, it, it means a lot that like, hey, I guess I have a career. You know, it just always feels like you're struggling, trying to get people to talk to you, trying to make the film right. It's kind of like, wow, I've been here. And it's nice, and with the response of the number of entries that were in the festival this so year. So many. Like, what are the numbers? I don't even know. I just know they're high. Yeah, <laughs> it's super high. 
And then, um, yeah, so it, it's fantastic that independent film is still so strong, right? It's getting, this is a great Well, it's getting sign of stronger it. and stronger. I mean, when I made Independence Day in 1995, 96, I think I start the film with like, uh, in 1985, 50 films were submitted in whatever year that was, 1995, 800 films were submitted. Right. I mean, how many now? Like A couple thousand. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's an honor to be here. And is it still kind of nerve-wracking watching your oh film for God. the first time with strangers? No, the hardest thing for me <laughs> is the Q&A. Not the Q&A. The hardest thing is at the beginning because it's like I'm so nervous, even though I've done this a zillion times. After the movie, I'm full. I'm full and happy. Even if they don't like it, I don't care. I'm just happy that I achieved something, our team achieved something, um, and and we had an audience. I mean, it's like I like to go to all the screenings and hear where people laugh, hear what worked, what didn't, and and take people's questions. So. And then um, people across the country, you don't even have to come to Sundance this year, you already have distribution coming for the yes, film. it's going to be on HBO in the fall. I don't know when yet, but it's going to be on and everyone's going to see it and, you know, Robin Williams come inside my mind. <laughs> yeah, have you had a lot of people asking, I mean, as soon as I looked at the film festival guide and I saw that this movie was coming, automatically you want to go see it. So the news that the movie's coming and has been made is out there already. Have you gotten a lot of feedback already? I have, and a lot of um, festival requests, and you know, it's, um, he was a treasure, and I think the way people are reacting, um, hopefully the film, hopefully the film lives up to who he was, and we, we, we put a lot of care and love into trying to do that, so. Like we said, so much material. I think oh my be, God. If it were me, and thank goodness it's you and not me, the harder thing would be to decide what's not going into the movie than yeah. picking, because there's so much yeah, material. Yeah, I mean, at a certain point we had, you know, we have his friendship with Christopher Reeve from the Juilliard days, but at a certain point we had Christo the whole Christopher Reeve story play out, but it was taking away from Robin. We, you know, we mm. had a lot of, like, darker things that we didn't necessarily need. I mean, I think people come to a Robin Williams movie and they want to laugh. They want to learn, but they want to laugh. And um, yeah, it was a lot to go through. Had I, an amazing team helping me. It would take more than one person, absolutely, oh my God. for sure. It's like, you know, going through, I need everything printed up. And it's like, okay, <laughs> where does he say that he was lonely? Where does he say <laughs> See, that he school. was in love? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I need it printed up and in front of me. They're like, it's on a Google Doc. I'm like, I don't know how to no, open a I need Google old school. Doc. I need a day planner. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much, Marina. So looking forward to the movie. Thank Lots you. of responsibility. I'm sure you pulled it off beautifully. Oh, thanks. Robin Williams, Come Inside My Mind. The movie debuts tonight. It's going to be around tomorrow, and you'll be able to see it on HBO later in the fall or after. Make sure you look for it. And we will be right back with more of In the Can.